When you set up items in Dynamics AX, you need to set up item model groups. So I'm in inventory management here, and if we go down, we can see under setup inventory, we've got inventory model groups. Now, there's a lot of different parameters on the model group that affect uh, a lot of functioning of the item through the system. So let's have a look at a couple of specific ones in this particular video which is the ledger integration options specifically the physical and the financial and a related option which is the accrued liability on product receipt so I'm just going to work with this group so um, we'll want to look at the effect of post physical and financial inventory so I've got a model group set up here that's got them both turned on and I've got another model group that's got none of them turned on so let's have a look at the effect of what happens here so let's go and create an item and I'm going to go into my product information management we'll create a new item we'll call it X 870. Now we're going to pick my model group, so this will be a standard one. I'm not too worried about the particular accounts that we're posting to. Um, Insight and Warehouse is fine for the sake of the exercise for storage dimension group. Now, this is my item. Let's go and configure a couple of basic parameters on it. So I'm going to give it a basic uh, purchase price, so $50 in this case. Um, I'm going to give it a basic sell price, 100 and we'll give it a basic uh, cost price, which is 50 And I'm just going to set up my order defaults. and I'll stick a site specific setting so we can get it to default when we do the order. Okay, so that's our item created and of course what we're looking at is the effect of the ledger integration. So we've got FIFO attached here and now we'll go and post a purchase order and we'll see the effect. So I'll go into purchase orders go and create a new purchase order so we'll specify our item x870 so we're going to buy 10 of these for the sake of the exercise so 10 at 50 so let's confirm all right so the next thing we're going to do is receipt the product so receiving the product relates to the posting that will happen for the physical inventory. So in this particular case we're using FIFO so the post physical inventory is turned on so we're going to get a ledger posting. Now when you have the post physical inventory turned on you also get the accrue liability on product receipt so this will automatically uh, be checked as well. So let's go and receipt the purchase order so put in a number there so that's our receipt now let's go and have a look at the product receipt so we get a voucher um, that's a ledger voucher when it's posted and you'll see that we specify a credit to um, a an accrual account basically so purchases um, uh, received but not invoiced yet. Um, so that's our accrual posting and we're adding to our assets, so our inventory account. That's what happens here. So that's a physical um, transaction which is the product receipt. Now let's go and do the financial transaction which is an invoice. So we'll go to our invoice and we're going to just invoice this product and so we'll post the invoice. Now we're not changing the amount so it's just 10 at 50 for the invoice as well. So the invoice is posted so this is now the uh, financial voucher. So what will happen here is because the model group is set up that we're posting both physical and financial the voucher that 
was originally posted when we did the physical transaction, the receipt, um, will get reversed out. Um, so there's a, a debit there reversing that one out. Likewise, our asset account gets adjusted to reverse out the receipt accrual. And then, of course, we um, have the accounts payable uh, for the vendor that we need to pay and the the asset. Now, um, so we've essentially got four transactions here. Um, so uh, two debits and credits. There's a zero entry here. This is uh, I'm using AX 2012 R3 CU8. So there was a change in these vouchers, the double voucher. So you may get a zero uh, entry here on some of these, which uh, is a little bit annoying, but you can ignore it. So this was from CU8 um, uh, onwards. Okay, so that's the accounting entry that gets done. Now, let's have a look at another item and let's have a look at the effect of no ledger integration. So, I'm going to I've got another model group here and I've turned off all the integration options. So, let's go and create a new item for it. So we're going to find that group, so no ledger in this particular case is what I called it. Uh, we'll find our accounts, site and warehouse. Alright, so that's our item created. Let's go and have a look at the setup so I can put some basic prices in there. So I'm going to put in a basic purchase price of 50 and sell as 100 and we'll put in a cost, basic 50, and we'll just update our default auto settings. Okay, so that's our item created. Let's go and put a purchase in for this item. So we'll go into procurement, go into our purchase orders, Find our vendor. So X X eight seven one was our item. So we're going to do ten at fifty for the sake of the exercise, and then we're going to purchase confirm. So now we'll have a look at the receipt. So let's go and receipt the product. Now remember this item was set up so that we've got no ledger integration. So We'll get a product receipt entry here, but when we have a look at the vouchers associated with it, there's no actual ledger posting. So there's no uh, posting for the uh, asset that we've brought on or no accrual posting. So that's the physical voucher. Let's have a look at the financial voucher, which is the invoice. Alright, so we'll post that. And so if we have a look at the journal here, we've got our purchase and have a look at the voucher. You'll see our voucher is much simpler. We've got a debit to the raw materials receipt account and then we've got a credit going to our accounts payable. So you'll see the difference. This one's posting to an expense account, or an expense account gets picked up in this particular case, versus the entry that happens when we have the ledger integration turned on. So if we go back and see our previous order, if we have a look at the invoice and the voucher, um, 
we didn't get that expense entry we posted to the uh, asset account so that we can record the asset so something do you need to consider when you're setting up your items what accounting integration do you need to have for your items for accounting for the assets or expensing the items as you're flowing through so you could have different items that are set up with different types of model groups so that you can change the parameters as they post through the